Right, get this. Here's the story we want to cover now. Uh, we've got Donald Lawler on, who's a criminal lawyer. Donald, good evening to you. Good evening. Donald, um, the thing is, I've got in front of me here Home Office figures, and they're saying 7,300 foreign criminals, and this is a record number apparently, are living in freedom in the UK instead of de being deported. How come, my friend? <laughs> Well, um, I, I suppose the only reassuring thing to say is these are ones that at least they know about. So there's, there's a process which once people have uh, served their sentence, uh, they then have to be deported. Now, it doesn't happen in, initially, immediately, for a couple yeah. of reasons. Sometimes they're appealing. Um, and there was a court ruling in 2017 which said you can't deport until after the appeal process has exhausted. Um, now, it is fair to say for the Home Office, they are deporting roughly about 5,000 a year. Um, the more worrying figure is the 700 or so who have absconded. In other words, these are ones who are due for deportation but have gone off the radar. Gotcha, gotcha. So are we saying, paint me a picture here, Donald, are we saying we're talking about killers, we're talking about sex attackers, we're talking about drug dealers? Are they coming here to seek... Um, anonymity, asylum, call it what you want, uh, or are they committing those crimes here? Um, it, it's a huge mix because the, the figures just talk about people who are foreign nationals. Now, that could cover someone who's come over uh, a month before offending, but equally it could cover someone who's lived here since they were a child. So it, it covers a whole range of things. It also covers a whole range of offences because al although there is um, a number uh, who have committed the most serious of offences, um, the legislation talks about uh, automatic deportation for anyone who's given a prison sentence of 12 months or more. So it, it can also cover relatively minor offences. How can any of these people even think about trying to claim asylum if they've... They've a good lawyer. Well, is, is that the case? Uh well, well the, the asylum issue is a, di a, a different issue. You do, of course, have people who are over here um, claiming asylum and then, whilst claiming asylum, commit an offence. Uh, that, that is, of course, a subcategory. But the majority of these will be people, for example, who are uh, EU nationals or, or non-EU nationals who have, who have been living here and have committed a crime whilst living here legitimately. So, so it covers a whole host of different types of things. The, I, I, um, from looking at the figures, the people who are over here seeking asylum and then committed an offence uh -huh. uh, seems to be a very, very small number but compared you, to the, the you, others. You, you seem to think, however shocking these numbers appear, the Home Office are on the case here, do you? Or is this out of control? Um, well, they're out of... They're on the case in so much as that they're certainly deporting some numbers. But, I mean, the, the reports previously uh, into this have never made good reading. Um, there was a report in 2017 uh, where the Chief Inspector of Borders was saying that, that the Home Office was massively understaffed and were losing track of individuals. Um, so uh, al although they, they are, de you know, deporting mm -hmm. uh, several thousand every year, uh, it, it would certainly be... be be un it wouldn't be right to say that we should be complacent about this given that the figures appear to be on the up rather than on going okay. down. Donald, I would love to know your opinion on this story doing the rounds. This is breaking today. It's about a guy called Mo Chowdhury. He's 28 years of age. He's from Luton. Right. Now, he, yeah. He's a former Uber driver. You know about this, yeah? Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, he, here's the first thing. Right. This guy, this guy had planned to target tourist sites um, like Madame Tussauds, Piccadilly Circus, uh, the London Pride Parade, and um, yep. he was going to do this with a, with a with a vehicle and run into people. He had a knife, he had a gun as well. He's fixated on the royal family. And before we even get here, so today he's, he's, he's put away, but before we got to this stage, he was cleared of launching a sword attack on police outside Buckingham Palace, right? He's now been found guilty of plotting these terror attacks. But he was yep. cleared of launching this sword attack, even though you've got video footage which people may see on 24-hour news, and mm. uh, they see the police officer, this massive machete, uh, taking it out of his car. I mean, this is where we, as members of the general public, despair. We had a chance to put him away, and we didn't take it. Well, you, you, you say members of the general public despair. It was general members of the general yes. public who heard the defence 
uh, and, and said, yes, we can't be sure it was a terrorist attack. W- what his defence was in, uh, on that first occasion uh, was, was, was quite a narrow one. He was saying, yes, I, that's me. Yes, I was doing it. But it wasn't a terrorist attack. I was, in fact, doing, I, sp- I suppose, what's the common parlance, suicide by cop. I was trying to get myself killed. That's why I was doing it. Um, and he so that's OK, trials. then? You can, you can plead that, and then that's OK, and you say, poor you. Well, you know, there you well, go, well, you, we'll let you out. Well, you can't. Well, you can't plead it, but effectively, given that what he was being charged with was preparing, doing it as an act of terrorism, um, and he was saying, no, I wasn't doing an act of terrorism, I, I, was, I was trying to get myself shot. Now, on the first trial, it was a hung jury. Uh, the jury couldn't decide on that. And then on the second trial, uh, the jury... You know, and again, we can never go behind and know what a jury's thinking. Uh, the jury obviously decided that they couldn't be sure he was planning a terrorist attack. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, I suppose what's reassuring, shall we say, about this, let's put it this way, is that whatever the verdict of the jury, um, the security services themselves didn't buy it, frankly, um, and so had him under surveillance from day one of his release after his acquittal. Yeah. Um, and, and what, in fact, this whole um, thing for which he's now been uh, convicted was them posing um, as like-minded individuals uh, and basically getting him to drop the mask, frankly. Yeah. Um, so al- al- although um, the jury process led to people not being sure, uh, tabs were kept on him such that, as I say, the mask fell uh, uh, and now he's been convicted of something that carries a maximum life sentence. Jackie, one of the things he was thinking about was launching an attack during the two-minute silence on Remembrance Day. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. Lu- luckily in this instance, they did have tabs on him so they could keep an eye on him and mm. they, you know, he was under suspicion the entire time. What is so worrying is they can't do that with every single suspicious individual who's released from prison, who says they are not radicalised anymore, you you just can't possibly keep tabs on everybody. Well, what was also um, uh, disturbing about some of the evidence that came forward this time was that he had himself been mocking uh, the so-called, as he said it, de-radicalisation programmes that that were currently in prison. Um, And whilst he was on remand for the first matters, the matter for which he was acquitted, um, he, of course, was um, with others um, of a radical nature. So what one's got to, again, as we've been talking about many times, look at what programmes are we making these individuals take in prison, because at some stage they are going to be released, um, and and how do we have effective de-radicalisation programmes, or stop those who are too dangerous from being released before that's happened. I mean, can can they keep tabs on, you know, more people than they do? Um, well, they, they 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 the numbers. It's always difficult to say what the numbers are. They certainly, of those they believe are high risk, they do keep tabs on because, for example, we know that the individual who did the attack in Streatham um, was was of course being kept tabs on as well. Um, So it's clear that the intelligence services do certainly have risk assessments and do do take the steps where they think it necessary. But, of course, you can't keep tabs on everybody. And as we know from the London Bridge attack, individuals can also deceive. People can seem and and come across as being rehabilitated uh, when they're not. It's just so scary that there are people like this Mo Chaudhry out there.